Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio. Brought to you by OnPay. Built in Atlanta, OnPay is the top-rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com. Now, here's your host. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Atlanta Business Radio, and this is going to be a good one. But before we get into it, it's important to recognize our sponsor, OnPay. Without them, we could not be sharing these stories. Today on Atlanta Business Radio, we have Sean Keithley with Adrenaline. Welcome, Sean. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm excited to learn what you're up to at Adrenaline. Tell us what you're, who you're serving and what you're about. Sure, absolutely. Adrenaline is unique in being an adrenaline design company. We help our clients with branding and advertising, but we focus on those that have physical locations, and that's a unique challenge for people in a normal environment. Uh, don't not forget, you know, the last you know year we've been through with COVID. So thinking about living a brand through all your channels and include physical locations, and, and that's what we help our clients do. Uh, in Atlanta, maybe something to think about, not a client of ours, but Chick-fil-A is a brand people know about. And so if any of you have seen a Chick-fil-A on a Saturday and, and how they manage traffic and live their brand through culture and locations, that gives you an idea of how Adrenaline thinks about helping our clients. Now, uh, was this a recent development pivoting to only um, kind of in real life stores rather than uh, digital? That seems counter to a lot of what other agencies are doing. That's right. We, we did it intentionally. Um, we, we saw the masses headed to digital. And really, we thought about uh, from a consumer standpoint, there, there needs to be a balance. And we believe, especially in one of the major verticals we serve, which is financial services, money is very personal. And you just can't do everything online. You know, humans crave interaction. And especially when there's advice base or high value uh, transactions, uh, physical plays a role. And so we deliberately went to that market. And, and that's how we help our clients that are trying to balance those experiences. Is that why there's so many like kind of banks on every corner? Is that they view they view that as an important component of how they differentiate themselves? It is, and we, we launched our company around 2008 in the financial crisis. You know, the iPhone had disrupted the banking channel and what a branch did. Um, we're watching it be uprooted again by a pandemic, but but you still see branches you know come into shape actually and. Buckhead across from the W, there's a Chase branch going up. And so there's a reason they're doing that. Um, it, it's absolutely profitable, but it's a balance of, of being available and local, of uh, the brand everywhereness. And when you need them, they're there. You're generally going to see you know, smaller locations and bigger signs. A lot of the transactions that can be done remotely, they want to do, but they still want to connect with the neighborhoods and communities they're serving. Now, um, is your agency focused on those kind of mega, you know, stadium brands, the ones that uh, are the names of stadiums, or are you more in the kind of hyper-local community bank, uh, smaller institutions? Well, it's it's a good question. There are about 10,000 financial institutions. Five have half the assets. So there's a big imbalance. There are thousands of small community organizations. We find our clients through uh, thought leadership and looking for those that need our help, and they come in different shapes and sizes, but the ones we're talking to are, are typically growing, acquiring other organizations, dealing with brand challenges, and that does mean our clients can range from a $800 you know, million dollar bank to uh, some of our national clients that have a, a national footprint. But would they be kind of the mega ones, the the largest, the large, or your more challenger and emerging brands is a better fit? Well, we, we serve, uh, in our product set has uh, services in 12 of the top 25, but in 2020, uh, our three largest by revenue clients were, you know, four or $5 billion banks that have been aggressively growing into growth markets. So I think the answer is both. So now, how did the agency land in kind of the financial services uh, arena? Well, we, we put the company together by acquiring different companies and, and building this experiential group. Uh, we did not see a company in a space that did what we did. 
And when we, we again, we, as I mentioned, as we went into the financial crisis, we really thought that the industry was going to go through a lot of change. So we've hired people that were working in banks. We've hired designers that have designed banks. Um, we've hired a lot of people that had, you know, never worked on a bank. Um, we, our executive creative director is kind of known for things like working with branding in the Olympics. And he worked on the Beltline as they came up with that branding. So it's been a combination of people in the industry and out. And, and that's because consumers don't really just think about banks. You know, they think about experiences. But um, in, in the 2020 pandemic, our clients pulled us in. They really needed us more than ever. And so it has become a, a real focus for us in the majority of our business. Now, when you talk about experiences, um, do most customers view an interaction with a bank as a positive experience? Or, I mean, most people kind of dread going to the bank and, and <laughs> kind of waiting in line. Yeah, unfortunately, I think, you know, we haven't helped enough people create the right experiences. Um, it is a bit of a chore. Uh, it, you have to break it into to kind of two buckets. There is maintenance, um, and, and that is very different than these life moments when you actually need advice. And um, last year and during COVID, you know, there's a lot of life moments where banks were helping businesses stay afloat. And so it, it is a combination of, of, of trying to create low value things um, conveniently, but being available and, and really there to help when you actually need something. And that's why you mentioned earlier this Chick-fil-A experience where they're able to take what would be a negative for most other kind of uh, drive through restaurants and make it into semi-positive that people don't mind waiting or they see the kind of light at the end of the tunnel. It's worth their time to do that. Well, they are, and they're, they're really thinking about the experience of their customer. We've got two boys in travel baseball, and on a Saturday morning when they have to be in two different places, and we're going to go – to the Chick-fil-A, it's really great to get on the mobile app, you know, renew the order we got last Saturday and pull into the parking spot and out walks a smiling person and it hands it to you and you're off and, and you're running. And so there are mutual benefits around efficiency, you know, for the organization, but they absolutely make it easier with something that otherwise could be, you know, frustrating if there are, you know, 20 cars wrapped around and you're, you know, late for an event. But the uh, but as you're saying, the same thing happens when I'm in the bank line and I see you know the person with the bag big bag of coins two ahead of me, and I'm looking at my watch because I have an appointment. Uh, to have that same kind of semi half digital, half in real life experience, where I knew that I had an appointment at this time and I'm going to be seen at this time, would make everything a lot more uh, pleasurable. Well, that's why we got focused on this business when the iPhone came about, because basically the, the consumer regained the power. You know, their mobile device had all the apps and, and all the ways they wanted to do things. And, and honestly, the consumer is spoiled by the best experiences. And we don't believe the consumer will lower their expectation as they get into something that's actually emotional, like money. So it is forcing these organizations to think differently and to make sure they are, you know, balancing efficiency and experience. And that really defines what Adrenaline is trying to help our clients do. So when you're working with some of these financial institutions and they do have kind of business clients as their clients, what are some of the kind of low-hanging fruit ways that you can help them elevate those experience with those folks in particular? Well, we've got a client in Dallas and they are a commercial bank. A lot of their kind of older school bankers don't even know what a location would be for these days. And we started to get into their strategy and learn what they were doing. We learned that they had a courier service to go pick up money. They were really doing a lot of things from a cultural standpoint. But we got in to talk to the CEO and talked about how about in one of these, you know, nicer neighborhoods, it's, it's very uh, upmarket, uh, your clients there, a lot of people are spending time in weekends. We designed a beautiful branch big glass, um, really beautiful inside. You know, a lot of the people inside are, are on the phones or working appointments, but they started to host events. And so they did fundraisers, um, wine and cheese, and started inviting their customers, these big commercial customers they never got to see, to do things. And it really changes the relationship. Um, people see that happening. They wonder what's going on in there. That looks like a beautiful place. Inevitably, the next week, you know, a commercial client walks in and says, I would like to talk to you. So we're helping our clients think about what a physical location can do with their overall strategy based on their 
business objectives. And again, you know, the, the human craving interaction creates opportunity. It sounds like you've kind of expanded um, kind of what an agency's responsibilities are. So uh, a lot of folks think of an agency, they think about, you know, ads or branding or things like that, but you've expanded it into the kind of the physical environment and the experience and, and maybe it even permeates the culture. Um, uh, that seems like a uh, kind of a bigger picture. You're, you're trying to, to play at a higher level than most agencies do. We're one of a kind in that we think about brand experiences and we can help people work on their brand or communicate it if it's in a good position. And then we help them think about, you know, how their consumers interact with their brand. And again, if you've got physical locations, that's a very challenging, you know, thing to do. If you think about your website and then your, your location, you need to feel like you walked into your website. So, you know, we are, we are much more than an agency. We, we do agency work, but what we're really about is helping our clients create experiences. And that's the focus of Adrenaline. So now when they're when a when one of these financial institutions moves to you are they moving kind of from one agency to you and now ha- have a bigger kind of scope of services that you can offer or is this kind of sometimes the first time they've gone to an outside help in this regard Well it really it really depends I think the first thing I would say is we're very flexible we do not sell big packages to people we try to solve their problems And so the larger the organization, the more likely they've got a partner at some level. It could be their architect. It could be their agency. But no one is really working all those things together. And so we can come in and and consult or do the part that needs help. Um, In other examples, someone's had a bad experience or they need need a change and they want to think about it differently. Um, Sometimes the organization is changing. You know, sometimes the facilities group had all the money and made all the decisions, and now they've hired someone that's head of experience or or head of brand experience, and they don't want to just do the TV commercials. They are really focused on what happens when someone walks in our facility. So it really depends, but I think our flexibility to work either holistically or is a partner and do that better because we understand the holistic holistic experience is is what allows us to, to help people on the level they need it. And then what is, is there a typical kind of point of entry? Is there one pain that stands out or it sounds like you have a variety of ways that you can plug in. It's just a matter of the timing, right? Getting the timing right for whatever that specific pain is that they're trying to solve. That's exactly right. So just two that are happening more and more. We're getting phone calls and and they're hitting our website and wanting to talk. They've they've, they've got a brand problem. And you think about a lot of these community banks, uh, even regional banks and credit unions, They've outgrown their name, and you, know, you can think it on in the largest scale with SunTrust and BBT, BB&T coming together, and they had to come up with a unique name that, that didn't give one of their other organizations you know, all the power. So really, at all sizes, people are kind of figuring out their brand, and, and that's one of the huge ones. Um, the second is we use a lot of data and analytics to help people make decisions about their physical, physical networks. And that part of our business is absolutely exploding. You know, people want to know, I have this network of locations. It's my biggest cost, but in some ways it could be my biggest opportunity. And and branches aren't one size fits all anymore. You know, we want to feel like we're everywhere and we have the convenience factor, but we're doing a lot of interesting things with remote drive ups, um, interactive teller machines that you can drive up to in a parking lot. And there's different ways to make you feel available across a network versus just building large branches everywhere. So I think those are the two big things that are happening. Um, The third, which I predict will will be more this year and next year than the last three years combined, is the mergers of banks. And, And we become the easy button when our clients buy other banks. We help survey those locations, re-sign them, and make them part of the brand. And so there's three big market conditions going on right now that we're, you know, qualified to help people. And those are the two and three things we hear most about when people want to, you know, work with us for the first time. And you believe that um, there's always going to be a place for that hyper local location, a physical location, despite there's, you know, more and more kind of financial institutions are giving you online only options. 
I, I think that for a lot of organizations, the online only won't work for them. And they are going to use their, their biggest asset, which is their people. And they're going to have those people in communities. I think overall capital expenditure and number of branches will decline, but I think the experience in those branches we keep will, will be better. And that's a trade-off I'm willing to have. Um, we don't need 100,000 branches that are really like going to the DMV. If we have 60,000 that are more of a spa experience in terms of look and feel and they're advice driven, and I can do all my low value things on my phone or at a drive up, that's where this is all headed. And I think for a lot of organizations, that's how they're thinking about it. And then uh, typically those kind of institutions are risk averse and it's kind of a follow the leader uh, kind of mentality. A lot of times, are you finding that um, there's some of that that you're having to deal with and to kind of really prove the model before they kind of jump in? That's why we really focus on a predominantly inbound business development. We think about thought leadership. We've just started our own podcast, Believe in Banking. We've had uh, bank CEOs on there. We're just evangelizing about best practice. And then inevitably, when people are at a moment where they need us, they reach out. That's how we avoid uh, trying to spend time convincing people they need to do things. I don't really have time for that. And there's too many organizations that need our help. And um, you're just seeing a, a big transition. And, and really, it's around are we going to survive and grow or are we going to sell our organization? Um, there really isn't a room in 2021 to just tread water. And so we're seeing, you know, a lot of activity. And if, if not, then there's a lot of um, people merging and joining forces. And, and so that's how we kind of avoid spending a lot of time trying to convince people to do things that we, we know they should do, but they haven't yet realized it. So now did COVID make your job easier? No, <laughs> I, I don't know anybody other than Lysol would say it, it made things better. You know, it, one of the big things we miss is our town halls. Um, we, we moved into a 25,000 square foot, you know, location just because we're growing here in Atlanta um, on Piedmont. I don't see our staff like I would in 2019. We have a office uh, up, up north of Boston and I haven't been up there nearly as regularly as I would. Um, and so that's the biggest thing. It's, it's been hard. Um, we, we made a fast pivot. We, we did remote work that, that we could. Um, as you've heard this morning, much of our work you can't do remotely. We, we were still using safety protocols, but we were in branches changing signage. We, we have branches that are opening. They were under construction last year, but, but everything was more difficult for sure. But was it... Um kind of the catalyst needed for some of these organizations to say, look, we have these branches, we're going to have to give them a better experience in, in the location. Did it force those conversations or make more of those conversations come to a head because they just had to deal with it? W without a doubt. We talk about COVID as a catalyst, and it really has done that just exactly. Um, and there are some good things coming out. Um, we heard people say in 2019, we don't do it that way. We can't afford to do that. You can't do that at a drive up. In last year, they had to figure it out. And so we were very busy in 2020 with a lot of work that we weren't planning to do in terms of giving advice, making branches safe, doing all those things that you're mentioning. And so it was absolutely uh, a, a very unique year in that aspect. Now, uh, moving forward into 2021 and as the pandemic wanes, um, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, to maybe help them navigate this chaotic time, what is the best way to do that? Is it um, through a web your website? Yeah, that's that's where we go. Adrenalineagency.com. Um, there's a contact us. We have a whole team of people that are just focused on taking inbound um, requests and, and talking to those people to see if we could help them as they navigate, you know, this post-pandemic world and, and balancing experience with safety and efficiency. Uh, fascinating stuff, Sean. Congratulations on all the success and, um, you're doing important work and we appreciate you. Well, thanks for having me. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Atlanta Business Radio. And remember this work could not be done without the support of our sponsor on pay. Please support them so we can continue to share these important stories. Today's episode of Atlanta Business Radio is brought to you by on pay built in Atlanta. 
OnPay is the top rated payroll and HR software anywhere. Get one month free at OnPay.com.